Hey, Build Show Build Network. Steve Basic Architect. We're out here at the Build Show Build Boston site. If you haven't been watching those episodes, man, you gotta jump on that. We're on uh, about to drop episode nine, um, where we, we're talking about the concrete slab and everything down in the basement, but a lot of exciting stuff going on here. But I thought I'd come by here, just a whole bunch of little tidbits on how to frame and uh, some of the uh, more uh, eccentric stuff that we're doing here. But today we're gonna to talk about the concept of drift. Now, what is drift? Drift is a structural term, meaning how do we handle drifting snow, right? So you can see the main portion of the owner suite here is a vaulted ceiling or volume ceiling. As we move down the hallway, we come into the flat roof portion here that I'm standing in. So what happens is along this wall line, we actually have the wall of the volume roof and the flat roof meeting. So we basically have this flat spot where if there was say a blizzard or wind blowing and snow, you would have the ability for the snow to migrate here, but because of that vertical wall, it would basically build a snow drift and potentially create a heavier load at this cheek wall of the volume space rather than somewhere out there in the middle of the flat roof where the wind is pretty much gonna blow the snow off of and the potential for drifting there is somewhat zero. So, come a handy dandy pointer. Pointers are uh, at a very low uh, uh, commodity out here, so I had to grab the vacuum hose, but anyways, you'll get the point. Uh, but notice here, we ha we're using eye joists. These are Roseburg's RFPI nine and a half inch eye joists. They have a three and a half inch LVL flange. They're rated for, you know, probably about a little over 20 foot. We have an 18 foot span here. But notice, typically we would put those at 16 inches on center. But notice here, these, except for the exception here, and that's due to the layout, but these are all 12 inches on center. And as we march across here, I believe it's for about eight feet to right here. And then notice from here, it goes out to that 16 inches on center and then progresses at that 16 inches on center. But we have that 12 inches on center for that first eight feet that meets that cheek wall or that vertical surface. So now if we get the wind blowing in a blizzard and we develop a snow drift up there, well, we've increased our structural capacity by diminishing the centers from 16 inches to 12 inches, meaning that we've reduced that uh, spacing by 30% which increases the capacity of the joist because in four feet, we're getting four floor joists now instead of three. So we've increased that by 25% every four feet. We've gone out eight feet, which means basically we've inserted two additional floor joists to handle that drift. So let's go back to the studio. We have this all drawn up. I'll break out the roof framing plan. We'll discuss drift a little bit more and uh, yeah, we'll learn a little bit of structural engineering. So I'll see you back at the studio. All right, there you have it. We're back in the studio. Hopefully you enjoyed that out on site there. Um, you know, roof drift, it's a pretty cool little concept that some parts of the world don't have to worry about. I mean, if you're living in San Diego or Houston, probably don't have to worry about roof drift. If you live in International Falls, Minnesota, it's probably one of the things at the forefront of your mind. So anyways, got Big Red, got some plans, details, all that good stuff. Let's get after it. All right, so grab the uh, partial portion of the roof framing plan, give you a little orientation. This is that high wall here. That's where that cheek wall is. Right there, cheek wall. So, cheek wall. So, 
So teak wall is nothing more than here. This will have a section through a flat roof. And then we have that higher sloping roof here. We'll have that in section. We'll have that and it goes down into the room. But this is the flat roof. And this is the sloped roof. Right, so that's sloping down to a point somewhere there, and it's also sloping up to a higher point in the foreground. But what we're really concerned about is this section here, because that's the cheek wall. We're going to go over here again. Uh, something amusing about saying cheek wall, I guess. But uh, there you have it, cheek wall. So what happens is there is this structural concept, and we'll write it down here, but it's called drift. And what is drift? Well, because we have a vertical surface sitting against our horizontal roof here, you have the ability for the wind to swirl and throw the snow and compile it in a drifted mound up against the cheek wall. So what does that mean? It means that, you know, you may have your roof here and you have your snow. Well, that snow can pile up here and cause a drift, snow drift. There. So what that means is, is it puts some extensive weight here. And that weight, if I was to say plot it on a curve, we have a very consistent weight here, but then it has the potential to get really heavy here. So that's our structural curve for load, if you will, where this is the largest amount of load here that we're going to accumulate there. So if I just marched down here at 16 inches on center, well, I have the potential that this could be carrying upwards of one and a half, two times or more than what's happening out here. So I need to strengthen that up a little. And so you can see here, we have 16 inches, 16 inches, but then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So from that cheek wall all the way out here to ten feet, we adjusted the floor joists or roof rafters at this point, the nine and a half inch RFP 90s by Roseburg. And um, we moved those up four inches in spacing or basically decrease them by 25%. So every three or every four feet, we went from three floor joists or three roof rafters to four roof rafters. Um, so we've increased our capacity in that first 10 feet by roughly 25%, right? Going from three to four. Um, and then that allows us to combat any of that drift we get there. Now, potentially you could have the wind also, you know, blowing in this direction and basically blow it off, but you do have to account for that vertical surface and the potential to uh, capture that. So we did, and we did it. Now you could have went to deeper ones. We could have went and substituted you know, the first 10 of these for an LVL, making them stronger, um, as opposed to the engineered floor joist. So working with our structural engineer, again, the solution was the nine and a half inch. So we stay with that. So that way they're, they're compatible all the way through, but you can see how there's the spacing here versus the spacing here that they're much tighter. So, and those again are the RF 
PI-90. And those are by Roseburg. I use them out on this project. I mean, there's other companies. I like Roseburg. They have a nice collection of uh, engineered wood products that uh, make selection real easy. They have a, a very wide spectrum of, you know, LVLs, I joists, and uh, engineered wood columns. So, but uh, now in that slope section, when we have our parallel cord trusses there that make up that wall, and I, and I want to say this isn't that high of a wall. Um, you know, the higher this gets, the, the more potential that, you know, this would get here with a higher wall. So with the lower wall, we get a little lower um, load, but there still is that potential. And the other thing is, is, you know, this is made to slope. It is made to drain. But when you get these higher insulating levels of snow, you can tend to get some um, additional melting down in there, which makes the snow a little more slushier and not as fluffier. And, and it increases that, you know, that load capacity also and makes it just a little bit heavier. So anyways, there you have it. Any flat surface, decks, um, flat roofs, um, you know, any, any horizontal structural surfaces that get put up against the vertical surface in a cold climate. Obviously, you know, we don't have a drift issue in North Carolina or uh, Florida, but uh, also the longer the snow stays on the roof. So as you go further north in the climate zone six, this becomes even more of a prevalent issue or and or in Canada, et cetera, or Alaska. Um, any of those would make that um, a little worse. So anyways, there you go. That's what I know about drift. And uh, I shared it with you. So hope you enjoyed that. All right, there you have it. Big red came and conquered. Um, yeah, hopefully you learned a little bit something about roof drift. A lot of people um, have never even really recognized that uh, it exists and it's a concern, but there you have it. Um, we chatted about it. If you're looking for more, you can find me, Steve Basic Architect, on Instagram. Give me a follow and uh, yeah, check out. We're putting up stuff um, daily where we talk about um, things that we're finding out on our projects. So um, go check it out. If you're still looking for more, obviously the Build Show Network here. I got hundreds of videos up and uh, the network has thousands of them up. All my colleagues putting up really good information. So go check it out. And remember, science says watch them seven times. So um, you got your work cut out for you. Lastly, Unbuild It Podcast. Yeah, Peter Yost, Jake Bruin, and myself. Yeah, we talk... Uh, all kinds of things building. So go check it out. And uh, until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Long live our buildings. <laughs>